The next question then is, how do we represent vectors? Well, this is very simple. We show a vector by drawing a line of a certain length in the direction of that vector, and the length of the line represents the quantity of that measurement. For example, if I draw a line representing my weight in newtons, that is, say, four centimetres long, and I'm standing near a child whose weight is half that of mine, I would draw a line two centimetres long to represent his or her weight. The important thing is that if we're standing close together, the two lines must be drawn in the same direction as we're both being pulled towards the centre of the Earth. Notice that I also put an arrow on the vectors to show which way they're pointing. On the other hand, if the child and I are in different places on the Earth's surface, our vector lines will not be parallel. Very often we want to label the vectors so that we can talk about them or use them in calculations. There are three ways of doing this. The third way, that of using something called column vectors, is shown in the column vector movie. So for the moment, let's look at the first two ways. If a vector is drawn between points on a diagram that are already labelled A, B, C, D, etc., we can use these capital letters to refer to the vector. In this diagram of a regular hexagon, we can say that there is a vector from point A to point B, and we call this vector AB. Notice that we place an arrow above the letters to show that we are talking about a vector with direction going from A to B, and not just the length of AB as measured with a ruler. As we shall see, we often need to refer to the vector without the capital letters on the diagram. In this case, we use the second method, which is a lowercase letter written in a bold font. When handwriting, you probably won't have a bold font available, so instead you write it as a lowercase letter with a small squiggle underneath, just like this. Now we know what vectors are and how we can refer to them, let's take a look at what we can do with them. The first thing to realise is that vectors that are equal in length and point in the same direction are equal vectors, and this will come in extremely useful, as we shall see very shortly. In this diagram, we see a lot of vectors that are the same length and are pointing in the same direction. If I call one of them vector A, this one let's say, then all the others are vector A too. This may seem a little strange at first, but you'll soon understand this if you imagine a number of people who all have exactly the same body mass standing near each other. The same vector will represent all their weights, measured in newtons of course, because they will all be exactly the same length and point in the same direction, i.e. downwards. This idea applies to all vectors, and not just weights. So going back to our regular hexagon, the vector AB is exactly the same as the vector ED, because they are the same length and point in the same direction. So I can label them both A. Now look at the vector going from F to A. This we write as FA with an arrow on top, as before. And I can also give this a lowercase letter as a label, but I cannot use the letter A this time as the vector FA is not pointing in the same direction as a vector AB, even though it's the same length. So instead, I'm going to use the letter B, small letter B of course, or any other letter I care to choose. But you will immediately see that there's another vector that's equal to the vector FA, and that is the vector DC, because it's the same length and points in the same direction. So I'll call this vector B2. And lastly, you'll notice that vectors EF and CB are equal, but different to both the vectors A and the vectors B. So I'll have to call these C. We will return to this diagram in the next video, but before we go, there's one other very important idea we need to look at, and that is multiplying a vector by a scalar. 
In this case, the scalar is just a number, like 3 or a half. Look at this vector A. For the sake of argument, let's say it represents a force pushing a toy car up a children's slide. How would I represent a force pushing in the same direction but three times as hard? Well, this is easy. It's literally child's play. Simply draw a line in the same direction but three times as long. Now I can put this new vector wherever I like because all vectors that are the same length and point in the same direction are the same vector, don't forget. But what happens if the second vector is smaller than the first vector? No problem. Suppose my new vector is only half as long as my first vector. Just draw a line, half as long as the first vector, pointing in the same direction, of course, and label it as half A. Soon you won't be worrying about whether the vectors you use represent forces, velocity, acceleration, electric current, magnetic fields, or anything else. You'll simply concentrate on the length and direction of the vectors in your diagram. And that's the beauty of vectors. We can use the same mathematics for many different situations. And finally, let's take a quick look at the points we have covered in these two introductory videos. Number one, there are two sorts of measurement, scalar and vector. Vectors have quantity and direction, whereas scalars have quantity but no direction is involved. Number two, mass is how much material there is in a body, whereas weight is the force by which the Earth pulls it down. So mass, measured in kilograms, is a scalar quantity, and weight, measured in newtons, is a vector quantity. Three, we represent vectors by lines of a certain length, pointing in a particular direction. We normally put an arrow on the vector to show that direction. Four, we can label vectors in different ways. The first is to label them using capital letters, going from a particular point on a diagram to another particular point. The second way is to use lowercase letters in bold type or with a squiggle underneath when handwriting. The third way of representing vectors will be looked at in the video on column vectors, of course. Number five, vectors that are the same length and point in the same direction are equal. Now this will turn out to be an extremely useful idea later. And six, we can multiply vectors by simple numbers such as three or a half to make them longer or shorter. In other words, they represent larger or smaller quantities.